It's time for the Douglas Coleman Show. Mr. Smooth and Savvy is joined by guests from all walks of life. From the entertainment industry to authors to political and social commentators. The famous and not so famous. The controversial and the light and fluffy. We have it all. Now, here's Douglas Coleman. Okay, please welcome to the Douglas Coleman Show, S.A. Schneider. Hello, how are you? Yes, I am good. Doing good today. It's a nice day here. Had a little rain, now it's nice and cool. Uh, where are you? I am in Ohio, close to Kent State, oh, uh, okay. about an hour south of Great the Great Lake uh, Lake Erie. Let me ask you something about Lake Erie, since you brought that up. As a kid, I was always <laughs> okay. I was always told that the lake was toxic. But I, I think they have cleaned it up substantially since then, right? I mean, I'm talking back in the 1970s. Yes, it is a lot cleaner. I know there's a lot of initiatives and stuff. What's probably where that grew from was the Cuyahoga River, which runs down through a large part of Ohio, uh, actually caught fire back in the late 60s or early 70s sometime. It had so much toxic waste and crap in it that it caught fire and burnt. So we actually had a burning river. Wow. Uh, and that's where a lot of that, I think, came from. Okay, but the lake is clean now? I mean, do people swim in it? Are there fish? Oh, definitely, yes. Oh, good. Well, I'm glad. It's nice to see, because I know that uh, we are pushing our environment right to the brink. <laughs> and uh, I think it was <laughs> yeah. a lot worse in the 1970s. We've certainly made some improvements, you know, like... L.A. doesn't yes, have the smog that it used to have back in the uh, the 70s. I mean, L.A. was horrible back then. It's horrible now, but for yeah, a different reason. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yes. I understood, yep. <laughs> so anyways, you're here to promote a book. Uh, your book is called Embracing the Magic. Uh, this looks like a children's book, yeah? Yes, yes. It's for... It depends on the age of the reader, but it's like a chapter book, so targeting like fourth grade, some third graders, some fifth graders, it, uh, fantasy. Um, it's trying to get kids to read, hoping they enjoy this type of book to read. Okay. Have you written other books, or is this uh, the only one? I have written a few that haven't seen the light of day yet, uh, and so working on those, those were earlier projects. Um and not counting anything I wrote for my mother when I was in school myself. <laughs> um, but this is the first one that I've gotten where I feel it's a good story, the craftsmanship is pretty good, and it's ready to go out. Okay, why did you decide to write uh, children's books? Uh, is this one for your children? Was that the inspiration or, or something else? In a way it was. I actually didn't really decide to write kids' books so much as it was just natural for me. I was trying to write uh, an adult thriller and just write these other books that I was thinking were going to be for adults. And as I'm working with a couple other authors that were helping me, guiding me, mentoring me, the, I really started to seem like this is not for adults. This is a kid's writing in a kid's story and that's when it dawned on me because i've always worked with kids i've done lots of things with kids and scouts and martial arts and baseball and it was like oh duh well that makes sense and i had written stories for my kids uh as christmas presents for years so i, I don't know why it, i didn't just start doing that originally but once i realized it fell into place my voice seems to be much more targeted towards kids my my thinking my attitude is very much targeted towards kids uh that's probably why i fit in very well with them <laughs> well it could be or you could just be a big kid that never grew up right is that how you feel yeah yeah that's what my kids say yeah well there's nothing wrong with that you know sometimes looking through child's eyes at the world uh gives you a more pleasant perspective because I think we can get very bogged down with all of the problems in the world as adults where kids don't, uh, they look past that, you know, they don't see it. Yes, I agreed. And, and I agree with you that one of the overall guides, I guess, that I came to realize through multiple writings is I try and help 
my readers see magic in the world, that there's still magic that happens. And it doesn't have to be magic like Harry Potter or my book. It's magic of, you know, the spring and the wind and enjoying things. And I try and encourage kids to use their imaginations and keep that even as they get older into adulthood. Because I think we do definitely become adults and suddenly you can't imagine and play and stuff like that. So that's kind of the overall theme all my books seem to have as a uh, an undercurrent. So this one, Embracing the Magic, is this going to be a series? Oh, it, it looks like the, the picture is very small here, the cover. Uh, it says series book one. Is that right? Okay. Yes. And when it started, we have a local at Kent State. Uh, there is a local Wizarding World Harry Potter Festival every year. And I wanted to get a short story with wizards and magic in it because I didn't have any of those and go set up an author table and have a magic wizard book to try and sell and talk to parents and kids and all that. So I wrote this short story and it just grew and grew and not only became a full book, which is this one, but now I've got plans for a complete seven book series. I've got a history of the world, all sorts of things grew from that. So that's what got me started writing this particular book and story and now the series. Okay. Well, looking at the cover, it looks like it takes place in Middle Earth. Is it, uh, why don't you explain the story a little bit? So it's a basic coming of age story. In the main character, Samuel, in his world, uh, there is magic everywhere. And there are people that can channel that magic. And they become town magicians. And the town magicians help their town by drawing people in. People want to come to towns that have the best town magicians. Well, Samuel knows that their current town magician is a fake, but everybody else uh, doesn't see it. So a, a, be, a big, bad, evil wizard comes and challenges the town magician to a duel, and so our town magician has to travel to the Grand Wizard to get trained, and Samuel also wants to have magic, but also doesn't trust the town magician, and he tags along. So there's some adventures, and we find some things out about both characters, and at the end, there's some revelations, and Samuel's world changes. Okay. That's probably a good place to stop. We don't want to give the whole book away on the show. We want <laughs> right, people right. to go out and buy it. Uh, okay, so this is uh, book one. How many do you plan on writing in this series, or do you know? I've got four main books that I definitely want to get out because they're all four interlinked. And there are some things that are in book one here that aren't going to come back until books three or four. And I've already got things in the first two books hinting at what's coming in books three and four. So it's very interwoven uh, that I get that a lot from George Lucas and Star Wars and all the things that he interwove through the stories there. So I've got at least those four, but I do have some plans for some books that stories that take place after these four and some prequel books from when magic first entered the world. But along with that, I've also been writing some short stories that take place in between books. And those I'm putting up on my website for teachers, parents to get for their kids because the books, the short stories, they include words to know. They, they have discuss, discussion questions and other things trying to help teachers and parents with curriculum and working with the common core uh, teaching and uh, ep things for the kids to do to learn writing and things. So that's going up on the website to go along with the books. Okay. Did you say you had kids of your own? I do. They're older and grown now. So oh, okay. that's why I need to, uh, you know, write these stories and go visit and meet other kids because I don't have kids that want to play so much anymore. Well, no more Legos <laughs> and Star Wars figures. <laughs> if they're grown up, then no. But uh, no, I was just going to say that... Uh, other authors that I've interviewed who write children's books who have kids that are, you know, within the age group that the book is geared towards, they often run them by their kids first as their sort of first critics. Uh, but I guess that wasn't the case with you, yeah? Well, my uh, son has read uh, the book and provided very good feedback. He understands me, and he is a bit of a kid himself. He works at a comic book store. <laughs> and he collects Ninja Turtle toys. Oh, well, that's so, okay. Yeah, uh, he kind of, yeah. 
<laughs> and uh, I've run it by him and some other people, and I've got my cousin, his grandson, has a uh, eight-year-old. Eight, my cousin has an eight-year-old grandson, and I gave them a copy of the book, and we've got some nice video of them reading it together. So I still have some kids in my life that I'm passing it along to. Okay, great. So there are kids in your family, your extended family. Yeah? Yes. All right, well, that's super. Okay. I want to ask you something that's on your bio here. It says, S.A. Schneider has a wolf. Do you have a pet wolf? Ooh, I actually do. Yes, his name is Hunter Moon Moon, uh -huh. and he's a big, goofy baby. Uh, he's he's as big as a wolf. I mean, when you see him, people get a little like, oh, my God, that's a, a wolf standing in front of me. But then he looks at you, and his tongue flops out to the side, and he rolls over and shows you his belly and wants a belly rub, and he jumps around like he's so happy to see you and prances, and I've never heard him growl or snap at anybody. In fact, we've had a couple other dogs. We had a Dalmatian that was much, much smaller than him, but she would growl and look at him, and he would cower and like, oh, I'm sorry. So he's not dangerous. He's not mean at all, uh, but he has the luscious fur of the wolves that you can pet. He's just a big old silly baby. Well, uh, he and he's actually... I'm sorry, he's actually in a story that I've been working on that's going to hopefully come out in the next year or so. I was just going to ask, because I know something about that. Um, is he pure wolf, or is he bred down, like, with dog? What percentage of so, wolf yeah, is he's he? Bred, from what I, I was told, and I've never had him checked, but what I was told was he is 75% Sarloose wolf. Oh, wow, okay. Did you need to get a special license for that dog? Well, actually, he was gotten at the dog pound. Somebody had him and turned him in, and we got him from the dog pound. So I don't know if that counted or if we should have had something else, but they didn't tell us we did, and we've had him for years. So. Okay. <laughs> All right. No, because I've heard mixed stories about them. I mean, they're absolutely beautiful dogs, and I'm a major dog lover. I've got two of them right here in the studio with me. But um, I've heard mixed stories about the wolf you know, mixed dogs, where a lot of times they'll mix them with Huskies or with German Shepherds. And, you know, obviously that there is concern that the dog has more, the more wolf, the more wild the tendency of the dog is. But I don't hear a lot of, I, I hear concern, but I don't hear a lot of people saying, oh my God, my dog just or the wolf just ripped up the house and killed everybody. And, you know, I mean, I don't hear stories like that. No, he actually likes the outdoors better than the indoors. And we have had him in a few times, and he is a little destructive. He, he gets a little excited, and he'll jump on the dining room table, and he'll knock everything over because he, he's huge. And he will chew on things. Uh, we've had a hard time putting blankets or anything in his doghouse because he just pulls them out and chews them up. So he's definitely a much more outdoor dog, and he likes that. Um, but like I said, he's not mean or anything. So uh, other than just tearing things up, we put the hay instead of blankets, and he's fine. He sleeps in the snow. He actually loves it. Well, I was just going to ask know, maybe you. because he does have husky or something. I was just going to ask you. He probably loves the cold weather and hates the hot, right? Yes, definitely. Uh, we have him in a nice area. We have a nice run for him. And, you know, I, I'll come out sometimes in the morning. Not the very coldest times, but I'll come out and he sits up and he's got snow covering him. He was just laying outside in the <laughs> snow, buried him in the snow. Yeah. He likes that. That's true. Okay. What does he weigh? Uh, we're not really sure. He, he doesn't like to be brushed. He doesn't like to try and uh, get him onto a scale. He doesn't like car rides. He gets sick. So we think he's about 165, maybe 175. Well, that's a big dog. Yeah, that's for sure. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, listen, I'll let you go. Uh, thanks so much for coming on. And again, the book is called Embracing the Magic, book series one. Yes. Yep. And you said there are plans for more books to come out, right? Do you have a timeline or just when you're inspired? I, <laughs> no, I've got the... the general idea for books three and four, and I'm actually writing book two now. So okay. I really hope to get book two out before Christmas and, you know, tell everyone they if they like book one, they should get book two for Christmas or try them both for Christmas, right? There you go. 
Okay, great. Uh, last question, then I'll let you go. Do you have a website that you want to give out? Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, it is sa-schneider.com, and it's the German spelling of Schneider, so it's S-C-H-N-E-I-D-E-R. Okay, and there's links there to your book, and uh, any pictures of the dog on your website? Um, I don't have one, but you know, I really should put one up, because everyone loves the wolf and wants to see more of the wolf. I've got a really good picture <laughs> of me and him. Uh, I will have to get that up there. Oh, yeah, that'd be uh, and great. And the, the, web, the website's got uh, resources I put up there for teachers and parents and to get their kids writing, and it talks about some of my appearances and the video game storytelling class that I teach and things. So it's pretty packed full. Okay, great. Well, again, thanks for coming on the show, and uh, best of luck with your books. Thank you. I appreciate it. 